All right, so in this video, I wanted to go over the differences between Atools and Animbot. If you don't know, Atools is basically an older version of Animbot that was made by, I believe, the same person that actually made Animbot. However, there is no more development on Atools anymore. So if you do get Atools, just know that it is an older version. There might be some issues with the plugin. However, it is completely free. So if you don't have the $60 to spend on the cheapest version of Animbot, Atools can be a really good alternative for you. So I just wanted to real quickly kind of go over the main Animbot tools that I use most often and show the Atools equivalent to those. That way, if you watch any of my videos where I use Animbot, you should be able to follow along with Atools pretty easily. So I have another video where I go over basically the install process for Atools as well as where to find it. Uh, but now let's go ahead and actually jump into this scene and go over kind of the main tools that you'll be using. So the first thing that I wanna talk about here is the quick select set here in Animbot. So I have this little button right here. I can have my all selection to select all of my control curves. I have my left and right fingers. I can also come in here and add new selections. So maybe I wanna add you know, the left foot to that. So I might click that add button, type in L foot for left foot, and then that's added that to the quick select set. So it makes it a lot easier to quickly select the controls that you want. This is also really important. As you can see, I have my fingers on their own selection. So if I wanna come in here and do quick kind of animation with the fingers, I have those all selected there without having to go in here and individually grab each finger control. Um, also, when you are animating fingers, you might wanna move them and rotate them as a group. So you might wanna grab all of them at one time. So the A tools equivalent to that is this button right here. And also I did want to quickly mention that when I downloaded A tools, I did notice that you can't really dock this in any other position in Maya other than like the very bottom of the viewport, which is a little bit annoying because typically I like to have, especially like Animbot, usually above or below my timeline. Uh, but with A tools, it seems like I kind of have to have it docked here at the bottom. If I do try to move it anywhere else, it'll just snap back to the bottom. So that might be something you run into. Maybe it's just the version of Maya I'm using. It doesn't quite like this, this plug in here and it kind of forces it down there at the bottom of my viewport. But we'll go ahead and just keep it like that and work through that in this video. So what I wanna do is select this button right here and this will open up a tools kind of quick selection set menu. Um, so if I wanna come in here and maybe do a selection on all of my control curves, I can just grab all of those control curves. And then with this, I can change the color of this if I want to. I'll keep it on the default and just type in all. And then you can see that's added that selection here. So I can quickly select all of the controls. So I can also come in here and do just like what I did with Animbot, maybe just do a selection on the individual finger controls themselves. So I can go ahead and hit the plus icon and do left fingers. And then that will add that to this selection set. So a very similar setup to how Animbot uses it, but obviously a slightly different kind of user interface. And it is docked here directly inside of Maya. I'm not sure if you can actually undock this like you can with Animbot. Let me actually try that here. And it looks like you actually can by just selecting that and moving it off to the side. However, it does want to snap back to the bottom. And I don't have my interface locked. So, you know, this doesn't happen if I use Animbot and move that out, it'll move an undock fine. Uh, so it does seem like something with a tools just acts a little bit finicky with some of those settings. So the next thing I want to talk about that I use pretty often in a lot of my videos is the kind of copy world position or basically just copying and pasting a position of one control to another. What I can do here inside of Animbot is if I wanna select this control here and I basically just wanna copy its world position, I can just come down here and select this little world button. And then if I wanna paste that to the left foot, I can go ahead and open this up and you can see we have the paste button right there. And you can see it's going to snap to that exact same position. And that's going to work with something like a locator as well. If I have this locator off to the side and let me just show it here. If I have this locator like up here, I can actually copy the world position of that locator and then paste it to that foot position. You can see that controller is going to snap 
right to that position. So we have something pretty similar to that with A tools. So if I want to copy the position of this foot, I can select it, shift select the foot that I want to paste to basically, and then just select this button right here, and that's going to align it. And I actually did that the opposite way. So what I wanna actually do is select this foot, the left foot, and then the right foot, and then paste that, and then that will snap it to that selection. So something pretty similar. And um, we can also do that with the locator here. I can select the left foot, shift select the locator, and then that will snap to that locator, just like we have with the copy world and paste world tool inside of Animbot. So that's kind of a tool's equivalent to that. And now I wanna go over probably one of the most important tools that I use in Animbot and probably the tool that I use most often, especially if I'm working on any type of cycle animation. So with Animbot, what I can do is select, you know, this foot control, this foot control, and just hit that mirror button. And it's just going to flip the feet around. And then what I can also do is select maybe my whole character, hit that button, and it's going to mirror that pose as well, create a mirrored version of this contact pose. So that's kind of how I use the mirror tool inside of Animbot. I can also just select this drop down button here with all of my control curve selected and do mirror all keys. And then that will actually mirror this entire animation. So now we just basically get a flipped version of this entire animation rather than just one single pose. So if I come down here to A tools and I come over to the mirror function, I can go ahead and just hit that button and that will mirror this pose. Now, one thing I did notice is that it has some issues with, at least on this rig, the foot controls. So it seems like it didn't really mirror this properly and it's just the rotate Y value. So for the right foot on the rotate Y, we would need to have that basically negative 11. And then on the left foot, we would need to have that positive 14. And that's really the only issue that I saw with mirroring with A tools, just fixing the feet on this. And it might vary rig to rig. It might work fine on a different rig. It might just have issues with this rig. And I can go back before I actually did that first mirror function on the contact pose. I can select everything, highlight all the keyframes in my timeline, and then just hit that mirror tool. And you'll see that it should mirror this walk cycle. But again, we're getting that foot issue where basically the rotate Y value needs to be reversed. But other than that issue on this rig, we can easily mirror with A tools. So another tool in Animbot that I use that can be really helpful is the temporary pivot tool. So I can come down here to my foot control and inside of Animbot, if I come down here to this button right here, this is the temp pivot. I can select that, move this pivot to maybe the tip of the toe start rotating and now we have this temporary pivot now on the front of our foot which would make it easier to get kind of a toe peel off you could also see the functionality of this temp pivot on maybe like finger controls so if you have your hand kind of on a table like this and you want to you know push off of that table you might actually want to pivot from the tip of the fingers to get like a nice peel off so you could add that temporary pivot to just the tip of your fingers to get an easier way to actually peel off that hand from the table. So I'll go ahead and undo that temp pivot on Animbot. And then inside of A tools here, we have the custom pivot as well. I can select that, move this to the tip of the toes, and then we can get that change of the pivot point. So we have that same functionality inside of A tools. So something else that we have in A tools is the animation copy function. It works pretty much how you expect is just copying and pasting an animation. And we have that same tool as well inside of Animbot, the copy animation function. So something else that I wanna show here is the tween tool in A tools and the tween tool in Animbot. So it works pretty similar. So if let's just say I go to this pose on frame eight and I want to adjust where this foot position is. So if I go ahead to this tool down here at A tools, we can see we have this text on the top left here, where if I hover over one of these options in the tween tool, you can see it says tween 80% with the previous key as I move forward, you know, tween 66% with the next key. So that would be key 12. So what I'll do is maybe select the tween 80%. You can see the keyframe on frame eight is now going to get much closer to the keyframe on frame four by using this tween tool. 
So we have that exact same functionality in Animbot as well, just using this tool right here to do that same function. And that's another tool that I use pretty often. So you can use that in Atools as well. Something else that we have is this option right here, which is the same as this tool in Animbot. And if I go ahead and open this up, you can see we have a bunch of different options like ease in and ease out, the noise wave, as well as pull and push, which is what it's currently set on. In A tools, we have that same option. So a lot of the times I will use that pull push option. So maybe if I select my root control there and I'll bring up my graph editor, you can kind of see what we'd get out of this functionality. So if I go ahead and select maybe all of these keyframes here and I use the pull push, you can see it's going to kind of increase that, reduce it, by using that kind of slider there. I'll go ahead and undo that back to default and I'll select those again. And then with A tools, we can come down here and do something very similar. So you can see we're able to kind of pull and push the value of the selected keyframes. So that's another tool in Animbot that I use pretty often. So if you see me use that, you will be able to do the same thing with A tools. Now the next set of tools I did find a few issues with A tools and I wasn't actually able to really get them to work properly. So if I come over here to A tools, the first one is going to be this fake constraint option, which I did a YouTube video on how to use that sort of temp constraint setup inside of Animbot. So A tools does have that option here, but it doesn't work. Every time I select this tool, it crashes Maya. So it might just be a version of Maya that I'm in. Maybe you'll have better luck with it than I do, but it seems like the functionality of that tool doesn't seem to work, at least in the version of Maya that I'm in. So that's not something that you'll have access to. Usually I don't use that temporary constraint option too often in Animbot, but you won't be able to use that. At least in my case, I can't use a, a tools equivalent to that. And then the other tool that we have is the motion trail tool. I wasn't able to actually view my motion trail in the viewport. It, it didn't really seem to do anything when I selected that. Luckily, it's not that big of an issue because Maya does have its own motion trail built in, which is actually a really great motion trail. So you could just use Maya's built-in option for that. The next tool that we have, which is a tool that I haven't actually tried with Atools. It's just something I actually don't use all that often in Anabot anyway, which is the micro transform tool. So it just allows you to use this tool to make much more micro adjustments, really get in there and make tiny little adjustments to maybe like the rotation of a foot. You can use that tool to do that. And we have the same thing in Anabot, the micro manipulator as well. So that's really it for this video. I kind of just wanted to show the main tools that I use in Anabot and then the equivalent to those tools inside of Atools. So if you aren't able to get access to Anabot, Atools is a really great free alternative that will give you access to a lot of the main tools that I use inside of Anabot.